The posterior fossa is simply a location, and it happens to be the most common location for tumors in kids. That area is in the very back of our head. It's where our cerebellum and our brainstem are located. There are a few fairly common tumors in that location, something called um, a pilocytic astrocytoma, medulloblastoma, ependymoma. Um, there are a few other types of tumors, but th those tumors are a spectrum of a variety of different diseases. And if your child has a tumor in that area, that area alone doesn't tell you what the tumor is. It's a location. So oftentimes when a patient is diagnosed with a posterior fossa tumor, if it's in the setting of symptoms, those patients often need an intervention. And that intervention may be a biopsy. It may be treatment of a secondary consequence of having a tumor in that location, which is something called hydrocephalus, or it may be surgery to try to remove the, the tumor. So hearing that your child has a tumor in this area doesn't necessarily mean that they're rushing off to the operating room. That being said, oftentimes there are situations where um, we do tend to proceed with treatment fairly urgently with the goal of surgery to be obtaining a diagnosis, maximal safe resection to relieve some of the pressure and mass effect and possibly treat hydrocephalus, as well as ultimately to treat the tumor. Tumors in this location, as with many tumors, require a, a multidisciplinary care team. So a neurosurgeon, a neuro-oncologist, um, and sometimes even a radiation oncologist are involved. And we also always have a neurologist involved in the care of these patients. Ultimately, all the patients that I take care of who have brain and spinal cord tumors are seen through the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and the Jimmy Fund. And we have a cross relationship. So once you're plugged in with neurosurgery at Boston Children's, you're automatically part of the Dana-Farber um, care team as well. So surgery for a posterior fossa brain tumor, it can be a long surgery. So it can be four hours. It can sometimes be up to 12 hours. It just depends on how involved um, the surgery needs to be. Um, ultimately, nobody's in any rush when it comes to your child. However long it takes, it takes. But typically we do this with intraoperative MRI um, because one of the goals of our surgery is to take out as much of this as we can safely. And part of the way we do that is while the child is still asleep, we're able to take an MRI and see if there's any tumor left behind that we should still be taking out. And that allows us to do a really complete resection in these tumors. The surgery itself, we used every possible tool we can to keep it safe. Um, and that includes things like neuronavigation. So it's kind of like a fancy GPS system. So we can see exactly where the tumor is, exactly how it relates to other structures in the brain. Um, I mentioned the MRI. We use intraoperative ultrasound and an incredible team of anesthesiologists and sometimes um, neuromonitoring depending on um, whether or not that's necessary based on the tumor.